Hey there, U.S. history students. Uh, most important part, really, for us for World War I is probably how it ends, right? We spent a good chunk of time on how it starts and then why the U.S. gets involved. Uh, but how it ends is, is something that'll be with us when we start talking about the rise of fascism, Hitler, and the start of World War II. So the building in the background, a very famous structure, is the Palace at Versailles. And we're going to end up talking about the Treaty of Versailles that ends this war. And at the bottom of this slide, you'll notice I put the end of one war leads to the beginnings of the next. Uh, understanding this document and this treaty helps explain why within two decades, Europe and the world are in another world war. So let's first figure out how it ends, then we'll talk about the treaty. Uh, by the time we get to the spring of 1918, right, we've settled into trench warfare, we've talked about all those things. Germany starts to realize they're running out of resources, right? And it almost just comes down to a math equation. They have more people and stuff than we do. And so if we just sit here in the trenches for uh, the rest of time, we're going to lose. And so they try to mount one last final offensive uh, where they can put all the resources on the Western Front because Russia has left the First World War, something we talk about a lot more in AP Euro. Uh, but Russia is having a communist civil war, uh, and so they bow out of the Russian, or excuse me, of World War One to deal with the issues within Russia. So they put all their weight, the Germans do, towards the Western Front, have some success, but ultimately are stopped. Okay, and the Germans, especially the government and some of the high up military, start to realize the end is near. Right, it's only a matter of time. The rest of the world, including our president, President Wilson, start to try to think about what is peace going to look like when this conflict is actually over. And he, Wilson is going to put forward a very important document you need to be aware of called the 14-point plan because it has, drumroll, 14 points. So I'm going to kind of summarize it in four. Uh, these are the things you need to be aware of. And if you think about how World War I started from a U.S. perspective and really European perspective, these things make a lot of sense. Number one, open treaties of peace, right? We had the whole alliance system that was, if you get attacked, we'll help you, and da, 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 and that got an assassination to become a world conflict. So treaties of peace, not secret. We don't want an alliance system dragging us into another conflict. Points two through five, very important from an American perspective, freedom of the seas. Right? We shouldn't have to worry about ships being sunk that are trading, etc. Uh, 6 to 13, and I'll show you a map of this at some point, deal with the different uh, map or how the borders are going to change within Europe after World War I. It's going to look a lot different than it did before. And then point 14 uh, calls for a League of Nations, almost like a forerunner to the UN kind of, right? Where we have meetings of nations with uh, representatives at these things that can hopefully discuss, talk out, prevent conflict like the one we just saw that stemmed from an assassination and alliance system and all those things. Now, on the next clip, we're going to talk about the uh, all-important treaty that ends this conflict. So just make sure you understand war ends. Germany, you know, basically is running out of manpower, material power compared to its, uh, uh, its uh, people are fighting. And Wilson, from an American perspective, wants peace to look like this. Okay, And he's not going to get all the things he wants. And we'll see and talk about that in the next one.